This is the Tip Top Podcast, the T-I-P-P-T-O-P podcast, hosted by myself, Keaton Ditchfield, and we talk about everything to do with the outdoors. That's fishing, camping, hunting, birds, wildlife, conservation, and a whole lot more. This podcast is as raw, untamed, unedited, and unapologetic as nature. So buckle up. This is the Tip Top Podcast. What's up and welcome to a Tip Top Podcast. I'm here with Hansi Mayer. Now this legend brings in 40 bloomin' brands into the country. He's, he's one of the people that supply a lot of the fishing equipment that, that a lot of guys use. So he's not only an importer, but he's also an avid fisherman. And we'll talk about quite a lot of that kind of fishing and he's got quite an interesting past because he's a bit of a reservist. So he knows he's a bit of the, knows a bit of the policing side of stuff and all of that kind of stuff. But I am Keaton Ditchfield and welcome to the Tip Top Podcast. So Hansi, welcome. Thank you. So Hans, what got you into fishing? I think my father, when I was young. How young? Young, I would say, three years old. His first fish. I think it was below the damn wall. So it just takes one to get hooked. <laughs> what fish was it? Carp. Carp? Yeah. That's different to, compared to a lot of people. A lot of people are like, I went to a trout farm. <laughs> <laughs> no, there were no trout farms when I started fishing. So. Okay. There were trout farms when I started fishing. I, I caught a, a one kilo trout and I was very, very like proud until someone bashed it on the head. <laughs> what? <laughs> Completely moved it. Okay, so, so you had to eat it? Yeah, I had, I had to eat it, but it tastes delicious. Um, so then, from then, you, how did you start fishing like with yourself? Did you always go with your dad or what? Yeah, most of it, when I was young, we, we went as a family. Okay. So it was more the pup boy seat. So we okay. didn't really do fly fishing. And I only started fly fishing in the 90s, uh, early 90s. So we, my wife actually said, we mustn't take the kitchen zinc when we go fishing. We just take a rod and reel and that's it. Which is hard if you're going to fish for carp. <laughs> yeah, if you go carp fishing, you need to take the kitchen zinc also. So that's that's where what it boils down to. So literally, your wife was like, "Nah, I'm not taking the whole thing. Out. You're going to find a way of fishing with this little stuff." Yeah, she said, "Rather take a, a fly rod and start fly fishing, and then we'll see." And then I started fly fishing in the river, and she sits on the bank. Uh, so okay. that doesn't help at all. <laughs> yeah, so she's. she's <laughs> So she she's needs a book. Yeah, you are you're halfway in the river, up the river, you don't see her anymore. So she needs to sit and read a book now. Did, so, she, did she make you sell your stuff when you got when you when, when nah. you converted? Nah. Uh, I still got my stuff when I started popcoying my stand and my pot and my <laughs> everything, bottle keys and dips and everything that goes with it. Okay, so we'll talk about fly fishing now now. But speaking of popcoy and all of that, do you think flavors make a difference yeah in certain certain circumstances okay like like if you've got a lot of pressure i think uh, certain flavors will draw fish more more into your spot but most guys i think start with flavors too quickly they must rather go plain and then if you don't get any any response you go to flavors okay so you mean like if it's pressured what for the listeners that don't know when, they, when you call a venue pressured, it means there's a lot of angling pressure. That means a lot of anglers are there trying to fish for the same fish. The same fish. And there's usually when you say a pressured venue, it's usually a venue where the fish don't flow. So like... The water doesn't flow. Yeah, the water doesn't flow. So meaning the fish can't remove themselves from an area, not get fished for for a while and then move back in. Pressured fish usually are the fish that Gets caught. Are stuck there and they get they caught get caught a few times and so they get smart. Yeah. And so, do you think the guys that are fishing in a pressured area all use the same flavors, or and then the fish get turned off the flavor, or or what? Yeah, I think generally people tend to use the same flavors. The thing is, you need to always when you're at the venue try on something that nobody else would think of. Um, Put so something same, in the water. Different. Yeah, you still use flavors, but you use maybe less flavors or more flavors. It depends on on what the what what the reaction is when you put your bait in the water. Okay. If you get a bite early on, then you keep with what you have. Okay. If, if you basically um, 
nothing happens in half an hour with pop boy. You need to take your rod out and rethink it. Because the thing is, it's no use. You sit everything in the water and you sit for half a day and you don't get a bite. Yeah, that kind of, that that's more specimen stuff. Yeah. Okay, so then say you've got more than one rod. Would you put two, fla two flavors on two rods or would you put the same flavor on both rods and try them together? I, I would normally start out with you pop where you got two hooks on a rig. No. So you basically would start with two different flavors on the hook. Okay. And then you would do your other rod two different flavors. You get a heat on the one rod, then you would change one flavor over. And okay. basically systematically work through what they want to eat today. Okay. And then <coughs> what is your view on those two hooks? Because I'm not a fan of it. I think you have one rig, one hook. Yeah, I look, I, I'm not going to make a slip rig, so I don't have a, the... If, if you get a bite on the one hook, it pulls, the other hook pulls away. Oh, so so your hook sits right by your sinker. Okay. You, you can't get snag the fish in a different spot. So you basically okay. take... So the slip rope's got one piece of line that goes through a... Yeah, uh, two, two, B, two are like those rubber stoppers. Yes. <clears throat> on either side of it. So you basically when the fish pulls on the one, it pulls the other hook away. Okay. Well, that, that, <coughs> that's, that's a better method. I still don't like two hooks because I always... When I pop quit, I didn't use that method, to be honest. But it always, I'd find one hook in the fish's lip and then one hook somewhere else in the fish. Yeah. Maybe either on its side or hooked on a pectoral fin or something like that. And I was just like, ah, oh, it's a bit cruel, but I never used that method, so that might. You must try it. Okay, look, at the end of the day, I think if, you, if you're fishing, it depends on the flavor and how, how pressured the water is. Yeah. But one hook works normally nine times out of ten. Yeah. But if you take, we're fishing with three hooks in the river with a fly fishing, so you're not fishing with one there. Yes, but see, <coughs> I, with the fly, with that kind of fishing, those flies are usually quite far apart. They're like, how far apart? About, about half a meter. Half a meter away. Yeah. 50 centimeters. I don't know how many inches that is for anyone who's who uses inches. 50 centimeters is what? Like, like basically arm eight, length. Eight, yeah. yeah, 18 inches. 18 somewhere. inches, yeah, but the arm length apart, that's yeah. you, you can basically work on that. Yeah, so, and you're catching a fish which is less than that length most of the time. So the fish never comes in contact with the other, the other hooks, or 99% of the time doesn't come in contact with other hooks. Yeah. So it's not, so you don't actually hook them, and you use barbless hooks as well. Yeah, only barbless hooks, yeah. So. Okay, so then, with the pub koi as well, we're still, still on pub koi, we'll get to the fly fishing. The, the different uh, pup that you put on your, or your spring, is that going to make a huge difference? I know the torpedoes, those round orange ones, you get the four fins. Yeah. A lot of guys prefer to use those in a river because if you start reeling in, it picks it up off the bottom, so it spins. Oh, so your okay. line basically runs on the surface when you bring it in. Okay. So you don't get snagged up to the bottom as much. Um, also, the thing is, it depends on the weight you want when the fish picks it up and the distance you've got. So, um, yes, your pup boy doesn't really use a bolt rig. No. So pup boy rig... is a sliding, well, most of the time it's sliding where the sinker slides on the line. Okay. So oh. you strike the fish. You don't really, the fish doesn't strike itself. Okay. So a bolt rig, basically, for those who don't know, is whereby the weight of the of the um, lead or the sinker is what sets the hook. So a fish pulls the pulls the hook, and the lead gives it resistance, and that sinks that sinks the point of the hook into the fish's mouth. So with pop koi, it's not a bolt rig. Most of the specimen rigs are bolt rigs, and if your rig is not a bolt rig, you're going to need to set the hook yourself. So you're going to have to strike. Yeah, you need to strike it. If you don't strike it, the fish will just shake the hook out. Yeah, so that's why you'll have specimen anglers. They won't strike. They'll just pick up the rod and start fighting fish. And then the pub hoyers will, um, will strike the fish every time they catch them. <laughs> we got, we just it drove two. wasn't for me. Yeah, we <laughs> drove past some cops where they just put on their sirens and the one didn't expect it to be so loud. <laughs> Did you just see him blocking his ears? Okay, so we are here at a, at a toll gate. Hello! For those who can't see this, um, we are driving to the vault on our way to a fly fishing trip. Um, we're going to go target some yellowfish in the vault. <clears throat> 
which if you haven't done it, you have to do it. He's a shameless plug for Hunty. If you, because um, Hunty takes guys out, he's a guide. So if you guys want to experience nymphing on the uh, Vol, want to go fly fishing on the Vol River, where you are walking in the Vol River, catching yellow fish in knee deep water, it is a really magical experience. So just, if you want to do that, get hold of Hansi. His um, details are as follows. What? 082. 604-5122 and that is if you are in South Africa of course because yeah. if you're in America you can come too but then it's a long it's a long journey it's, to it's, come it's going to be a flight and a half to yeah. get there yeah. so give Hansi a call on um, on that number and you can book a trip with him and he'll take you out and uh, you don't you don't need anything here. you you just, you just bring yourself and your food that's it bring yourself and your food and then Hansi will provide the rest do you, do you cover entrance to the venue? Yeah, I know that you pay your entrance, so basically... So food, um, entrance fee, and um, bring yourself. Yeah, that's it. And a good attitude. And a good attitude, because you're going to get wet. Because you're going to get wet. You're going to get wet. It's not that bad. You just, your legs get wet and that's about it. But Hansi provides the rest. He'll give you the rod, he'll, he'll give you uh, flies. Everything you need to use for the session, he'll give it to you. And then you just give that stuff back at the end of the session. And then... You'll have memories forever catching many yellow fish, hopefully. Fish aren't guaranteed, but that's fishing, but it usually catches, how many on a session? Quite a few. Yeah, we normally catch quite a few. Today looks going to be a good day, so well, yeah, hopefully we're going to catch quite a bit. Last time we went, we caught seven. Yeah. That is pretty cool. That was pretty cool. It baffles yeah. my mind how he uses these. Okay, we'll talk about flies now, now. We're still on Pop Koi, but... <laughs> <laughs> that it baffles my mind how these yellow fish see these tiny flies. I'm talking the size of your pinky or slightly smaller. Yeah. They see that in running water that is moving so fast, there's no smell, the water's pretty murky, and they see it and they pick it up. It's just okay, it's quite amazing. Anyway, so when you when you used to pop koi, how heavy was your your leads or your, your springs? We your orange things, what was the lead on that? What ah, I don't think they put a little weight on it. No, there wasn't a lead no, on it. No, there's no weight. No, no, you've got a weight on it, but I don't know what a weight is. I think it may like most probably an a half an ounce, yeah? Because yeah. You, you're adding your weight when you cast your millibomb. So, um, if, you, if you make your millibomb, that, that is your weight. So, that gives you the distance. I think the, the weight on the float or the spring itself is more just to keep your rig in place if the millibomb comes off. Yeah. So, so you basically your um, your feet makes your weight to give you the distance. Okay. And then how <coughs> compact would you make that, that mealy bomb? Because I know some guys like the mealy bomb to break up pretty quickly so they don't compact it. Other guys like to compact it as hard as possible and they want the carp to actually bite on the ball. Bump, yeah, they bump the ball. Yeah, they bump, bump the ball. Is that, I, I, is that I, the term? Bump yeah, the ball. Yeah, they bump the ball. The fish comes in and sucks on the ball itself. <laughs> so actually break it up. Okay. Um, I, I, I prefer the ball sounds a bit painful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I would say not too hard. The thing is, if it's too hard, they'll actually just not be interested in it. It's too much so work. You, yeah, you you need to break it down so they actually just suck it up. They don't want to suck the whole sinker. So, yeah. So you can imagine you want to suck in a, a ball the size of your hand. So it's yeah, going to be a bit difficult. So. And then it'll kind of turn into a, um, a jawbreaker. Yeah, and you so actually, just don't, you don't get it. much from it, and it's just it's just a bit annoying after a while. So you're gonna go eat a hamburger. Somewhere yeah, else. You, you want the thing is you don't want them to struggle to eat. If they struggle to eat, they'll just move on. Yeah. If if you can get them to feed by themselves, not having any pressure or anything, and also the more food there is, just go around the more they will feed on it. That's yeah. why uh, method feeders work so well because the feed is very soft and it, it blisters very quickly it doesn't take a long time to blister and that bait is on the top yeah it sits right the there top. so the first thing they suck in is basically your hook, your hook bait i'm surprised by why pup koi's haven't moved to method feeding because it's so similar but i think method feeding is so much better it's like because a pup koi pup koi rig you can't you can't choose where that where that um, hook is going to be every time. Yeah. But a, with a method feeder, that hook is going to be on the top, pre perfectly presented every time. And guys haven't moved across to it. And you know, people struggle to buy 
Measured feeders. I think end of the day, it's more what people are used to. It's not a thing that they don't know it or they don't. They'll try it first time or they'll go and have one go at it and not persevere and then they'll just switch over to the old method. People they caught on it before. Yeah, they, they know what works and they don't want to try something new or, or learn how it works because you're, you're on a method feeder, your bait is not as hard as a pop boy one. Yeah, it makes them feel insecure. Yeah, so, so they rather go with something they know than try something new. Um, it's the same like when you're starting out fly fishing or any any specimen or anything. Yeah. You'll go and you'll ask this fishing shop, listen, what uh, I need to, I'm gonna start doing this and they'll sell you a whole lot of stuff. And you get to the water and it's like, okay, what do I do with this? Yeah, and I was at, I was at Lone Hill and I went fly fishing for some carp on the top. I didn't invite Hansi, but Hansi was busy. <laughs> He's working, like that's a good enough excuse. Um, <laughs> but I struggled, I didn't catch anything because I had tons of weed on the top of the water, it was overgrown, there was plenty of small kerpa, so as soon as the bread touched the water, the kerpa went ballistic and then there was ducks everywhere, it was very, very difficult. But then there was a guy there who'd obviously been sold some bass stuff, but he must have gone to the place and said, listen, I want to go catch fish. And they just sold him a shit ton of, of um, bass stuff. And he didn't, he didn't know how to put on the, the lure, he didn't know how to, um, to tie the hook on properly. The guy had no idea, so they didn't give him any instruction. So listen, this is how you tie it. This is how you put the, the soft plastic on the right kind of hook. Yeah. And this is how you cast and retrieve it. They didn't do that. So this guy was wasting his time and money, basically. So I saw him and I helped him, I tried to help him catch a barbel because there's not many bass where, where he was fishing. We almost got one, but he, he's, yeah, and he said he just, he, he like, he, when he saw his bag of bass stuff, which is perfectly good bass stuff, he's like, oh, I wasted my money on this. I was like, no, you didn't waste your money on it. You just don't know how to use it yet, and you at the wrong venue to use this kind of stuff. Yeah. You go to Borscorp, and his bag was perfect. Yeah. But he wasn't at Borscorp. So he's at Lone Hill where fishing for bass is very difficult but fishing for barbel is very easy yeah so yeah that's why i feel sorry for guys like that but the thing is i think before you go to a shop first find out where you're going what fish is in that dam yes and then maybe go to the venue or go where you want to go a week or two weeks before you go and go and ask the oaks on the bank what what do you use what do you yeah. what do you catch uh, just do a bit of research actually Go on Facebook, ask a question. A lot of firms and a lot of pages will actually, yeah. the guys are f willing to help you. A lot of guys are willing to help, especially if you go with the venue. Because if you say, where can I fish in Joburg? No one will answer because yeah. venues are, are very, very hard to come by apparently, very secretive, which I think to an extent is bullshit, but that's what this is, that's just the way it is. But if you are, if you go and say, listen, I want to fish, Lone Hill Dam, or I want to fish Emerentia Dam, how do I target it? The, yeah. A lot of the guys will give you, they won't give you their secrets, but they'll give you a lot of the basics that'll help you out a lot. Use this rig, use that bait, try cast in this vicinity, and a lot of the times that'll help you out a lot. And you'll probably blank a lot, but blanking means you're not going to catch many fish, or catch, you don't catch any fish, but you still will probably, you still might catch something and then that can spark your fishing and you won't waste your money, waste your time. You'll go to the tackle shop, hello, I need this bait and this rig. Then they can help you instead of just going, I want to catch fish, yeah. give me stuff. The guy, you need to give the guy some um, background to what you're going to do. So that'll help a lot. Yeah, I think also shops need to ask people more what, where they're going to fish and what they're going to fish for. Are they starting out fishermen or are they fishermen that's been fishing for years? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think people want to get involved or ask. Or, yeah. It's like uh, because you're inexperienced, you don't want to ask and then you, you don't enjoy the sport. Where this is a stunning sport, so it's actually, yeah, it's you, you can't go wrong with it. Yeah, guys, don't, don't be proud. If I, was, if I was starting out and I knew what I know now, don't be proud. Don't be scared to say, listen, I've got no idea what I'm doing. How do you make Please a Please help me out. Yeah. 
and a lot of the guy, a lot of the time, the guys will actually help you if you do, if you are humble and say, "Listen, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm looking. I'm trying to do this or that or whatever you're trying to do. Do you know how to do it? Could you maybe help me?" A lot of the time, the guys will help you, or at least they'll point you in the direction of someone who could help. Yeah. So that's that's a plus. That's at least it will help you out. So then, okay. Last couple of things on pub koi. Yeah. What lines and stuff did you use? How thick were the lines and did you make sure they were colored or did you make them sure they were clear lines? Okay, I preferred a black line. I don't, uh, when I started fishing, black or brown, something that's more similar to the color of the water. Okay, it'll blend in. Yeah, so you don't see it. You know, we fished the eight, I think it was an eight pound line. Okay. Where you make your hook links, you make, from a, you make a six pound hook link and an eight pound main line. So, so if anything's gonna break, it's probably gonna it's, be the little bit. Yeah, you, do, you don't want to have tons of gut in the water. So you, your hook link, your weakest point must be your hook link section. For those who don't know, hook link is the small piece of line that is tied between your sinker and your hook. So hook links are usually short between three and thirty centimeters long. It's not a long piece of line. It's, it's yeah, it's literally to connect your sinker or your main line. <coughs> to your hook so yeah so six pound and then four and then eight pound main line yeah and then hook size small i don't like a big hook so i'll fish like 12 with a size 12 or size 14 even okay. so the thing is i've caught big barbel on a small hook. yeah it's not the hook that catch the barbel it's you and your rod so it's, it's the way you play it you must it's a tug of war so you need to take a bit and give a bit Okay. So you don't need a massive hook to catch a, a big a big fish. Uh, a lot of people think okay, the bigger the hook, the bigger the fish. But also, see that's a but it's also a bit of a catch twenty two. And I think we can talk about it a little bit. Is with the bigger hooks, you got a bigger hooking potential because that hook is going to be heavier. It's going to you no, don't believe not that. Eh? No. A lot of specimen guys believe a bigger hook has got more likelihood of hooking into a. I think I've, I've caught bigger mouth. fish on the size ten hook. And on a size six, one. is it? Yeah, I like I like size fours, fours, sixes. I sometimes use twos. See, the thing is, I think it depends on also pressured water. The more, the bigger the pressure, the water, the smaller the hook I fish. Because the, 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 the fish feels the weight of the hook on the on the bait. So if it's a, it's a lighter, you you want it so light, it must actually just pick up the weight of the bait. That's all it is. Yeah, so it feels uh, like it's eating something. It's, it's just eating before. normal. It's no, no nothing different. Nothing different or nothing um, where they actually, I would say, uh, it, it needs to be natural. Okay. The closer to nature you can be, the better it's going to be. That's true. Yeah, the less likely the fish are going to see it and know there's something wrong. Yeah. And you say that and you use a brown line, but you use a bright orange. <laughs> a bright orange boily. Ach, what's it? A uh, pup. What's it, pop spring? What's it called? Oh, no, the I orange, uh, yeah, orange, the orange sinker. Sinker. See, there's method in the madness. If, say, for instance, all your bait is gone, your your feed is gone. If you if the fish see an orange thing on the bottom, they they're gonna see. Look what it is. But have, if they've been caught before, it's that a, orange it's a, it's thing. A, is, a, the thing is, the orange thing is similar. It's food food for them okay. because they learn where there's a yellow spot on the bottom of the lake. That's feed. So they, they learn that's what they can eat. So a lot of times you'll have a lot of spotches of yellow on the bottom and okay. then fish will target you know, home in on it because that's where the food is. Okay. So, so if, say for instance you only got your hook bait left and all the small fish ate all your baits. Yeah. At least it's something that draws the fish in. So it's, it, I think it's a flip, flip situation. The thing is on a hook link they'll, they'll see, I think they'll see the line. Yeah. So, so you know, you think they know what line is? Yeah, I think they know what line is. Okay. I think we we don't give fish enough <laughs> credit. <laughs> I think they know what's going on. And, but that's the why bottom. I'm thinking, wouldn't they know what a papkoi rig is? Yeah, I that's think it's way. a. Because if you're gonna make, I'm just I'm just being I'm just thinking <laughs> things through here because I'd, I'd like to work stuff out. With that, so if you've got a bright orange milli spring, yeah, papkoi spring thing. I don't know what, what's the actual word for it? I think I call it a torpedo. A torpedo. Torpedo okay, sinker. If you got, if got a bright orange torpedo, <laughs> what? <laughs> Wouldn't it make sense to have a brightly colored hook? 
I suppose I've, I've fished with reed hooks and the reed hook pulls the fish in. So I think, in the, the day, it, it can resemble a, a bloodworm on the bottom. Yeah. So, and the fish is inquisitive. So they'll suck it up and see if they can eat it and spit it out. It's like, if you look at the videos on YouTube or anywhere where they got videos of carp feeding, yeah. they'll suck up a reek 20 times before the hook gets set. Yeah. If the fish don't move half a millimetre, then they won't, end of the day, they won't actually get hooked. Yeah. So they stay static and they just feed on that same spot. Yeah, there was, uh, what was it? I, I don't know if it was that one of the quarter videos or not, but there was a big, big fish, like we're talking 40 pounds, 50 pounds. That's 20, 25 kilos. And it literally used to plonk its stomach on the bottom and then feed from that point and its head would go around slowly feeding 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 but it wouldn't move so it would pick up the rig and spit out the rig a couple of times yeah but it would never get hooked so that's that's why with a specimen your rig needs to turn so you need yeah. to have a rig that as soon as they sip it in it needs to basically drop to the bottom and turn so that's that's where you you, you critically balance everything on your on the specimen side okay so okay so within that and then the last thing is what rods did you use and would you suggest if you're a start if you're a startup fisherman what rod would you say what length what poundage i would say not a 12 foot rod i would rather go with a 10 foot rod because 10 you can do river fishing you can do dam fishing look you can't cast a half a mile but the thing is you if you start far the 10 foot. if you start out rather fish not too far but fish in one spot the closer you can cast to the same spot, the more fish you're going to catch. Explain that. You mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm picking up what you're dropping, but you're talking about creating a feeding area. Yeah, you need to basically get something on the opposite bank, um, and then basically that must be your you you mean aim, the target. You target to you the same spot. You don't try cast to the opposite bank, <laughs> but you choose something like that sticks out like a tall tree or a and, and you lamp cast post to or that something. same spot yeah. every time with the same effort, the same distance. So you can actually start drawing fish into your spot. That's why with, with the pop koi, if you don't get a bite in half an hour, 45 minutes, take your rig out, cast it again. Move. Same thing, cast it again and again. So you can actually start drawing the fish in. Yeah, so you build up, so basically with carp fishing, you, you build up a feeding area. So you actually put in free bait, which for pop koi is the, is the mealy bomb wrapped around the spring. Yeah. You create some free bait and then the fish get they eat that and they get a, they get accustomed to eating that and they feel secure in eating that. And then once they feel secure, they eat more recklessly, which means they are more likely to pick up your bait which has got a hook in it. Yeah, the, the more the more fish is feeding, the more competition there is, the, so the more yeah. the quicker they eat. So yeah. then basically you, you're creating a frenzy in the water. So yes. But not, not every situation calls for as much bait as possible. Some yeah. situations, like for example, quaka hook, the, a great strategy there is to put the handful, and they literally mean a handful of okay. tiger, are you good this time? A handful of tiger nuts and hemp seed, and that's all you use. If you put more, you're just gonna delay the fishing. But other places where they've, people have won competitions where they've literally put in a ton of maize and they won the competition like that. Prepared maize, obviously, like cooked maize so it doesn't kill the fish. But that's, see, that's that's talking about creating a feeding zone when you're literally dumping 20 kilo buckets of maize into the water. That's, but, but also you wanna, if, you, if you're gonna feed a spot with a boat or something, you wanna spread it. Yeah. You don't wanna have everything in one blotch because that is just unnatural. You want to have it so fish comes in and see the feed and having 20 kilos of maize on the bottom is that natural <laughs> <laughs> no but if you spread it it's more natural so yeah, they'll yeah, come yeah. and pick up a bit all over the place yeah and, and that's, they'll, and that's they'll also be moving between <coughs> pieces so that that's, means they're more likely to pull so your rig yeah they're more likely to pick up your rig because they're just picking up bits and bits all over the place yeah so it's a uh, but it's uh, look end of the day you need to play around with it yes. and see what works the best. Okay, so now oh, so we, we've gone past pop going now and now let's go into your favorite type of fishing, hey? Yeah. Fly fishing. Yeah. Is that your favorite? 
Yeah, I would say so. Why do you love that so much as opposed to everything else? I think it's not, you don't sit and wait for a bite. You go and look for the fish. It's like hunting almost. So you're basically stalking the fish. You're going to, you learn how to read the water, where there should be fish, why there's fish in certain spots and not in other spots. Um, But you're actively casting all the time. You're actively walking, casting the whole day. Watching. So we, you make, what I think, 500 casts a day yeah. <laughs> at least. Uh, Easy. Uh, and you need to work and get your fish and, and see why they're in certain spots and why in different spots. The next time you come, you, one week you catch them in the one spot, the next week they're not there. So, And it's not a dam where you know there's going to be fish and they're always there. So you depends on the flow. Spot, and, yeah. yeah, you need to check the flow rate. You need to know where pools are. Because the river's always changing. The river's always changing. If there's a flood this week, next week, the, the holes are not the same. Yeah, the fish is moving. Yeah. So, so, also, if it's the water's a bit up, you know, okay, I can fish the shallows now because the fish has moved into those areas because there's actually the food is there. So, it's, it's, it's more like a hunting almost, I would say, because you're stalking okay. the fish. You, you can't make a hell of a noise. You need to be, because Quiet. you're catching them basically the length of a rod from you. Yeah, literally. With with nymphing and when I, when I went with Hansi last time, you don't do these grand casts. Cast, this whole back and forward, back and forward. It doesn't do any of that. It's literally you pick up the line, put it upstream, and you let it slowly drift, drift down the line, down the water, down the stream with the water. And as as it does that, if a fish picks it up, you'll either feel it or see the line move. But then if nothing grabs it, it's flows downstream and you pick it up and you put it upstream it's not there's nothing fancy there's nothing difficult about it so anyone can do nymphing cast nymph casting yeah in terms of the end of the line nymphs is it carices and carices is it very difficult to find what they're eating nah you just pick up a rock break a bronze off see what what's in the water what's underneath the rock what's underneath the rock because that's what they're feeding on so all those little hojos and things that you're trying to imitate are attached to the bottom of rocks and stuff because yeah. they're out of the they they still need to be in the water but they're out of out of the current yes so you, you basically you, if, if you get into the water the first thing you do is you need to see what the fish is feeding so uh, you generally know what it looks like so you because if you're gonna a couple of times you know okay i must put a green caddis on or a black caddis on okay um, but it's best to get there pick up a rock break a branch off that's underneath the water go to the reeds first go see if there's a fish before you go there <laughs> and then break up a piece and see what what animal life is underneath the water because that's what they're feeding on so you're actually imitating yeah. so do you believe that they are Flies for fishermen and flies for fish. Yeah. Meaning, in a fly store, <laughs> yeah, a lot of flies there are plenty of flies fishermen. that are there to literally be bought by fishermen, and then there are flies that fish actually bite. Yeah, I think generally people tie stuff that's nice to them, not that works in the water. Um, flies are overdressed. I, personally, I think they're overdressed in the shops because there's too much material on the fly itself. Because if you take a, a sharp board fly, um, the size, if you put it next to a fly that you're a rock or an insect you pick up in the water, it it's yeah. doesn't match at all. Well, it's Look, like you'll still three times the size of the, of the, the actual caddis insect. you're trying to imitate. Yeah, so the thing is, the closer you can get to the caddis or the stuff they feed, the, the more fish you'll catch. I think you'll still catch with the ones from the shop because um, fish are they, they're inquisitive, so they want to see what what it is and they'll sip it in and spit it out okay um even arts in the water i think a lot of times they would sip that fly in and spit it out five times before you actually notice that anything happened to the fly yeah because they so quick and yeah they move in that water yes yeah it's it's uh, it's it's unbelievable to see what how they react and how that how it goes they're quite incredible little creatures how they live in such a such current all day every day they sleep in that current they know how to work the current because they sit behind rocks and stuff where they're not really moving much yeah I think they, 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 they basically take their fins and pin themselves to the bottom 
Man. So they, they if they turn the fins in the current, so they actually the water pushes them on the bottom, so they can just sit there the whole night on spot. And then if there's any 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 danger, they just lift their fins and shoot downstream. So it's actually, but I think they tend to go to your slower pools at night. Yeah. Um, one day we almost do a night fly fishing. Do you think they, do they eat at night? They eat at night. How the hell do they see a fly at night? How the hell do you think they see that fly in the, in the day? <laughs> that's, I, that's what I'm trying to work out. Now you turn off the lights. Now how does it work? Yeah. <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, I think um, they, they see it. So if, you, if you look, clarity on the wall, I think is about 30 centimeters. <laughs> yeah, depends on, it depends on how much rain the previous day or so fell. So, yeah. And they still see a fly the size of your pinky nail and eat it. If you take your fly is so small in the expense of water that you're putting it in. Yeah. If, if you're not in the right spot, you're not going to catch a fish. I think that's that's more the, the chase of the fish than actually yeah. to, to accomplish something that you actually had such a small insect imitation on and you catch a fish with it in the fast water and water that you can't stand there's fish in there yeah i've caught fish standing next to each other dropping a fly in the water after you release the fish you catch another fish <laughs> so uh, people tend to think there's no fish in certain spots there's tons of fish in the river they're just smarter than you they <laughs> just know what the hell is going on but i think noise factor also people tend not to they're in a big rush to get somewhere and lots of times they walk right over fish yeah they actually almost step on them they they spook them before they see them and then it's like no nah, this is a shit sport so i don't like doing it yeah meanwhile, you've meanwhile actually it's, you basically you like a fucking rhino uh, yeah I've, I've stood in the river where two guys come toward you and they come out and you tell them listen where you're walking there's fish and it's like no there's no fish there and then i would take a fly and put it right where they walked and i would catch a fish in that same spot and then look to them and then, smugly and <laughs> basically look to them and say there is fish there you just need to take your time yeah get your flies to the right zone right on the bottom you don't want to be right on top control your drift that's that's what boils down to you and you tie your own flies yeah i tie my own flies and you okay so almost another shameless plug catch me fishing <laughs> .co .za. .co.za is a fly fi online fishing shop where yeah. you can get all of your fly tying materials e materials equipment all that kind of shit yeah you can get all that stuff there so catch me fishing .co .za and hansi hansi runs that yeah, but he also fl ties his all his own flies and that's that's part of the enjoyment eh? yeah something I, you made a fish that is ate something that you created yeah you you tied it it's basically from a couple of feathers and a bit of dubbing and you made a fly that that fish want to eat so you your invitation is close to the real thing so and that's an it's quite an art form but it's not as hard as you think because Hansi Hansi doing some videos on on how to tie flies and stuff like that and it's you it's quite intimidating to get into but if you just follow the steps it's not that hard it's like it's like cooking it making this kind of meal is very complicated but if you if you are making a fly or making a, something from a recipe you just follow the instruct the simple instructions and all of a sudden you've got this beautiful meal so fly, fly tying is very similar in, in that kind of thing if you've got the right ingredients or the right materials you follow the right simple steps and at the end of the day with a little bit of practice you're going to have a beautiful meal or a beautiful fly yeah so and the thing is also, I think a lot of mistakes people make on the river is they would take three flies and fish the whole day with that three flies. Like, like you change colors, change You, you need to change. change. If you don't get fish and you know there must be fish in a run and you there for half an hour, change one fly. Yeah. And then you change another fly until you basically get to a point where you actually have fish uh, picking up a fly. So, um, yeah. You, you want to basically not it's, it's like when you do pop koi you change your bait Every if you don't if you don't get a bite you need to change your bait so if you don't get your fish on a fly you gotta it keep means changing the color on right if it a lot of times when you i think like bass fishermen if the water is very dark you fish with a dark lure so you can get a silhouette Magic in the water 
yeah, the thing is you need to basically make your fly stand out. Um, but just enough, not too just much. Just enough. The thing is a lot of people fish with a pink a pink yeah. fly or a pink thing and they'll catch fish. Which is so uh, weird to say. Because <laughs> there's to... nothing in the water that's pink. So. Yeah, but, but the pink picked up the eye. So on a good, on a certain day, it caught their eye and they're willing to eat it. Yeah. But on another day, only the brown boring fly will catch fish. Depends I th on the I day. I think you'll catch more fish with a boring fly than with a pink fly. But uh, if, if we take, we sell online, we sell nine different colors of beads. Yeah. So a lot of guys, we do a blue, you do pink, we do red, purple, and all those colors catch fish. Yeah. Like um, if, if they didn't catch fish, they'd be pulled from the stores because they won't sell. They so, won't sell, yeah. No so so the thing is, I think end of the day, it's, it's, it must be water, it must be the way the fly flows. It That's must, a good say, it's a good backup. That's, yeah. you start there. Yeah, so you basically start with something that you caught last time on. And then you, from there you start changing up until you get something that actually the fish wants to eat. Okay. And then your, your what they call it, tip, 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 I call it tip, because it's quite funny, it's not like tit, yeah. bit. So your tip, it is the piece of line that, that joins your fly fishing line, which is usually quite thick, so to, so your, to your, to your, Fly. Yeah. yeah, so from the fly line, you got a leader. Okay. So for yellows and stuff like that, I, I tend to use a long leader. So you take a 15 foot or even longer if you can get. Jesus. Um, so like 15 foot is how many meters? I think it's about four meters. I don't know. What's a 12 foot rod is 2.7. Yeah. So it's basically one and a half times the length of your fly rod. Okay. If you can go longer, like I fish with a 12 meter leader. so. The longer your leader can be, the better it's going to be because the tapers gives you turns your flies over better. Okay. And then from that you tie on your indicator. So we use a three-color indicator. So it's a yellow. Oh, a little mongoose. And then you red and a black. So you basically got the variation in color. So if it's a dull day, you see as the weather changes, you see different colors different of the color fly better, the yeah. line better in the water. Okay. And then you got your tippets. Your titbits. Your titbit. <laughs> your, tit, your titbits. And that attaches your fly. Okay. So then, okay, that, that, that clears that up. So your tippet is how many pounds usually? For this, for vol, fish, vol river fishing? If you're starting out, I would go heavy. I would go like a, a tippet, your section from your indicator would be a 5.1 or a 4.2 kilos. But start, start with something that's stronger than going very light. Because you're not going to be an experienced angler starting out. Yeah, so you don't you want to fish too to light the because the thing the is, if you if you if your weight of your rod is heavy, like a six weight, then you don't want to fish a two kilo line. Okay. Because the thing is, you'll just snap it off on the on the on the strike. The yes. fish will just break you off once. Um, if you fish a light rod, like we're fishing with three and four weights, um, then you can go up to I would say a lot of guys fish. I think a 2.3 and then they drop to a 1.8 because the kilo line. kilo line yeah so the thinner the diameter the quicker it cuts through the water and the, and the more likely you to get catch a fish because it's less obvious but, yeah, so it's, but you're going to have to know how to fight that fish if you go gently and strong enough in the current to keep that fish on the line but not snap the line yeah so that's why if you're fishing a light red rod you can go with a lighter tip because your tip is soft Yes. So you, you softer your tip, the more give, the less chance you're going to break off. I okay. know a guy that caught, I think it was a 10 kilo fish on a three kilo line. So yeah, it, it's all in the play of the fish. So and the skill of the angler. The skill of the angler and get the fish out the current. A lot yeah. of guys fish fight the fish right where they caught it. If you need to move, move. Don't stand in one spot like a, a tree. You need to move. If you catch a fish, move out. Yeah, you caught a 14 kilo carp. Carp. On a 3.6 line. 3.6 line. Yeah, in the Vol River. What happened was he fought, he had to follow that fish to make sure he didn't snap the line. Yeah. And you ended up walking how far? Three kilos. He walked three kilometers to protect, to make sure he got this fish. But catching a 14 kilo fish in the bowl on a fly rod with that light line, now that's a battle. 
Yeah. And that's when you, you two and a half hours battle. You so. phone <laughs> home and say, honey, I'm, I'm going to be late. late. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, you went, we didn't give you a deadline. I'm just going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're busy. <laughs> we're busy. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, the thing is, you can catch big fish on light line and small hooks. Yeah. But you need to know spend to the time. Them. And even a small fish, if you hook it up in the fast water, just see where there's a pool. Move your back, step back into a pool. Fight the fish in the pool. Don't fight the current. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when you fight it in the current, it, it'll just bully you. And it'll go sit behind a rock and you'll be finished. So, yeah. So, so coming back to the tip, it, so I would do for the starting out, do a five kilo or 4.2. And then you, your droppers do that, uh, your straft um, 4.2 as a dropper from a 5.1. So your hook link must also be lighter than your actual dropper line. So, okay. so if you snap off, only your hook link is in the water. You know, when less and line you leave everything. in the water, the better it is. Yes. Better for the environment, better for your pocket, because you're not going to have to replace everything. Yeah. Look, yeah, you get okay. snapped off. So at the end of the day, if that fish turns and the third hook hooks onto a rock, it's going to be why. Yeah, that's also working three hooks. That's also a problem. Yeah, you got you got trailing hooks always in the water, so yeah. you can get rock hooked onto a snag onto a rock or a tree, and believe me, they know where all the shit in the water is. Yeah, they, that's their home. They they've got the map of that in their mind. Yeah. Okay, and then what line do you use for this kind of fishing? Um, I've got a Mariel. I've got a the, the Witchwood uh, River nymphing line. Okay. So it's basically a floating line but it's very thin okay so you don't because you're not casting, not casting far. you're not casting fast you don't need if you take a fly line it's thick on the beginning and sometimes stick at the end so okay. your 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 fly line is actually your weight that's what it boils down to your and then, fly line is your sinker yeah and then your rod that you suggest you use which wood rods eh? yeah i use the which wood uh, drift uh, rods yeah. So I, I fish with a three three weight eleven foot rod. What which rod do you use? What the what's drift. the name of it? Drift. Is it a which would drift? Yeah, which would oh, drift. Yeah. Um, it's an eleven foot four weight, a uh, three weight, and then I'm gonna give you the ten foot four weight. Okay. So you you on a nymphing you want a longer rod. You don't want a nine foot rod. Yeah, because you because you get nymphing basically right in front of you. So the further away you are with your rod, the better it is. Yeah, and you're not casting. You're not casting. You're it's basically a flick. Putting, yeah. Lift, flick, and follow. follow. Down. Lift, flick, and follow. Yeah, that's it. That's quite cool. Okay, so that's so that's that's your setup. And then, what kind of fish have you caught in the bar? I've caught barbel, with barbel, carp, catfish, catfish on on fly, on the same fly as you catch. What's the name? Yeah, the, the yellows. The yellows. I've caught carp. I've caught uh, smallmouth yellowfish, largemouth yellowfish, largemouth yellowfish. It's something I'd really like to catch on fly. They say they call it the fish of the, what, 10,000 cost? 10,000, a thousand cost. Uh, they keep so on uh, making it a thousand million cost. The fish of seven billion cost. In other words, it's flipping difficult to so you, you'll catch. So you'll go for five times fishing and catch one fish. Yeah. Uh, when when you learn other, where they are, then you'll catch them. So, but that's the thing. If you go with a guide, he's going to, on that, I would say go with a guide. If you so want to target those. If you want to target those, go with a guy that does large mouth fishing. And he because he'll show you where, how, when, whatever. Because it's, it's not an easy fish to catch. Why and is that? And respect it. Uh, they're predatorial. And there's not a lot of them. But they're, they're, all, so, pre okay, so they're, they're all predatorial though. Because they're all eating Yeah, but the, the large mouth eat more nymphs and more frogs and more... Okay, bigger so flies. They won't. They look. They eat a nymph. I've caught a lot of guys catch them on nymphs in the same current as you catch any other fish. Okay. But you need to respect them. Respect any any fish you catch. Okay. Hey, they've got sable there. Okay, we're driving in the car for those who are only listening. We just drove past some sable antelope. Flipping cool animals with sweat. What swept back horns? Amazing. Okay, so. Yeah, that's my. It's on my dream fish to catch a largemouth yellow on a fly because that's just that's but that's the ultimate in. I think on the ball, yes. Yeah, ball. it's, it's like water. catching your your tarpon and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, uh, it's like a tarpon or a or if you're doing deep sea fishing, it's like catching a marlin. Yeah, it's it's the ultimate because they they are so hard to find. 
they are so tricky to catch and they fight so bloody hard apparently. Yeah, they fight hard until they basically end, right to the end. Oh, until they, yeah, until until they until pig, they die? No, no, or, no, they'll, they'll look, any they'll fish won't give up, net. so they'll get to it in to, to, to the net. So. Um, but also, what I would say people must do, if you fight a fish for 15 minutes, you should actually hold in your hands in the water for 15 minutes. Yeah, that's quite spend, important. Spend the time you took to fight it and make it tired to actually revive it and put it back yeah. in the water as it was. I think a lot of guys don't understand this because they catch the fish and pull it out and they're like, yay! And then it starts dying and they're like, why is it dying? With, with fish, if you picture it like this, it's like doing a 200 meter sprint or a 400 meter run, sprinting as hard as you can. And then at the end of the race, while you need to breathe the most to make you hold your breath. Yeah. Because the fish can't breathe out of water and they're literally fighting for their, they think they're fighting for their lives. They don't know that we're going to put them back. But they're fighting for their life, fighting as hard as they can and then they can't breathe. So it's quite important to always, number one, wet your hands before you pick up the fish. Yeah. And number two is before you pick it up, just give it a little bit of time in that net. Not, not days, but just you a little bit of time just to catch its breath. Then enjoy the, the experience. You're there, you caught it. Yeah. So take the time, take a photo. Give it a look. Give it a look and put it in the water, take it out the water. And then yeah. hold it in the current until it swims way strong. You don't just want to catch it, pop it in the water and then move on to the next one. It's, there's no rush. You're there to enjoy the day. Yeah, and enjoy this magnificent thing that you've caught because yeah. they are magnificent. Yes. So you, you want to... It's a whole experience. It's not just, I caught 50 fish today, 25 died, but I caught 50 fish today. Yeah. So, um, yeah, rather spend a little bit of extra time, look after it, put it back in. Yeah, the thing is, you need, even if you're bank fishing, when you catch the fish and it's on the bank, rather leave your net in the margins. Yeah, don't leave it on the bank. Just don't take it out, put it on the bank. If you don't have an unhooking net, just take a piece of sail or plastic or Something a towel that or something that won't get stones and grass and all shit on the fish. Yeah. You just want to respect them and next time you're going to catch it, it's going to be a couple of kilos bigger. Yeah. And hopefully more grumpy. <laughs> hopefully clever. <laughs> more clever. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Hans, what is your um, your best memory? Your biggest, your best fish you've ever caught on the fly? On fly? Yeah. Uh, I would say the carp was the best. Is it that 14 kilo? Yeah. Tell us the story. So we were at, I think it was Sequiflay, where we um, basically went in just normal nymphing for, for yellows. Uh, and I'm a, fish, I'm a person, if I see a fish tailing, I'm going to try and catch it. Yeah. Look, as, I, look, you're undergunned, you, you, you undergunned and you know, listen, if I'm going to catch this fish, I'm going to be in cuck. Yeah, so, but it's fun cuck. Yeah, it's fun cuck. So, you know, I mustn't do this, but I let should, me do it. I shouldn't, yeah. <laughs> let me just <laughs> try and see what happens if I'm going to catch it. And then you basically you hook it and then it sits in the one pool and then after a while you see it, okay, now it's coming up. Oh, no, it's a corp. Oh, it's a corp. <laughs> so then it's like, okay, yeah, it's a corp. Oh, shit, it's and a corp. And then it turns sideways and then the current takes it and you go, okay, let's go to the next venue. <clears throat> then you walk past <laughs> that venue and then you go down the next current and then you go to the next venue. Luckily, so when then you're in the water, you don't have to pay venue fees because that yeah. would have been quite an expensive fish. Yeah, so, so you're basically in no man's land. So. Yeah. So then you go down and you walk and you walk and it's like, is this fish ever gonna come out? And then you find a quiet pool and then you say, okay, now it's me and you. Me and you, but let's me go. Me and you, let's go. And then you need to beach it because your net is too small. Best problem to have. It's the best problem to have. Your net is too small. Or the, just the head fits into the net. <laughs> so then that's it. Uh, oh, that's exciting. And 14.2 kilos, eh? 14.2 kilos. That's my PB, I think. So, so the, pro the, the problem is, you the loan, so you can take a photo of the fish. <laughs> oh, so it didn't happen. <laughs> so, so it didn't happen really. So yeah, the problem is uh, there's no photos to prove it, but at the end of the day, if you're a fisherman, and like it, you it's, know it's for your yourself. Heart. Yeah. So you're gonna lie to yourself, you're gonna lie to yourself. So, yeah, then you're a prick. So, but it's, it's the experience to actually fight the fish, take it out and land it and oh. hold it for 20 minutes and then put it back in the water. We're not holding it for 20 minutes out the water. Nah, not but out the water, in the water. Yeah, hold it for 20 minutes in the water, just to be clear. 
Yeah. But, so that's your best fly catch. Have you caught a big barbel on fly? Uh, biggest barbel I think I caught was 14 kilos also, 14 or 15 Shit. kilos. That I caught on a size 12 caddis. Yo. 14 kilo barbel, that's like a river monster. Yeah, that, that I've got a photo of. <laughs> now he's going to prove for that, so that actually happened. <laughs> that actually happened, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big fish. And then best fish you've ever caught in your life? Best memory you've ever had? Ah, must be carp fishing, huh? Is I it? think specimen fishing, yeah. When you caught what? Um, I think it was a 13 kilo. That's a nice it's, fish. It's, it's just, it's, I think it's the chase of the fish and not knowing what you're going to have on. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite a thrill that for me, it's, 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 a, it's, it's out, out with them. So yeah, you literally got to plan everything, do everything and then hope it works out. And then hope it works out. And then when that, when that buzzer goes, when that bite alarm goes, it's like, you did it. It's like an alarm saying, you did it. <laughs> you get to catch a fish. You get to hook and catch a fish. I think you're going to lose signal there. We're going into the cradle. We're going to lose signal of what? Yeah, no signal at all. Of phones? Yeah. We don't need phone signal. Uh, for? No, that's, that's, uh, not, that's not going. It's not live. Oh, it's not live. No, we're not. Unfortunately, this podcast is not live. Oh, okay. I don't have a million rand to spend on data because in <laughs> South Africa, data is fucking expensive. And they're full of shit, so I, and it's, it's unreliable. So, yeah, this is not live, but it's unedited. Like, I've just said fuck, so you guys are going to hear fuck. So, sorry about that, kids. <laughs> um, this podcast, we say it like it is. We chat, and if you don't like it, listen to something else. That's, yeah, I literally don't care. I, your problem is your problem. Yeah, your problem <laughs> don't make your problems mine. But it's, I'm literally making this podcast to share the love of fishing, share my experiences, share the knowledge of my friends and my my um, my fellow fishermen and fellow at outdoorsmen because this is not just a fishing thing. We're going to talk about hunting, we're going to talk about camping, we're going to talk about outdoors. wildlife, we're going to talk about everything that is beautiful about outdoors and, and all the stuff that I love about outdoors and I'd love to share with people because we spend too much time on our fucking phones looking looking at shit instead of just being outside. That's what I loved about fly fishing the most, is the fact that we're in the water, we're actually part of that ecosystem. Yeah, you're part of the nature, you're yeah, basically going, you're, going you're, back. You're walking in it, now and again you you slip on a rock or you you listen to a kingfisher that's losing its mind next to you or a, you're listening to the water, you feel the breeze, you feel the current underneath you, what the water current. It's just, you feel like you're part of it. Yeah. No, the thing is, at the end of the day, I think it's it's more to get 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 it into uh, get into the bush. Into the bush. Get away from the rustle and bustle. You, you can't stand in the middle of and look on your phone. So. Yeah, not like not like Hansi's doing. <laughs> no, right I'm just now. sending a message to the boss. Uh, yeah. So Hansi's got many jobs. We'll talk uh, quickly talk about it, and then we'll talk about specimen fishing. Trying to get there before we trying to finish the podcast before we get there. Um, so Hansi is, he's got two websites. Yeah. One is catchmefishing.co.za yeah. and the other one is cmfcarp.co.za. Yes. So cmfcarp.co.za, cmfcarp.co.za is got a lot of NGT and Witchwood products. So NGT and Witchwood are, are great uh, British British company. Eh? Yeah, it's British. Yeah. So, so it's a British From company the UK. that creates all sorts of carp stuff. So like from the vibrate. It's gonna vibrate. Sorry for those watching on YouTube. It's yeah, it's gonna be just try not to get sick. <laughs> That's we can't do anything about it. So um, so it's got oh, things it's got things like um, burfies, bed chairs, rods, reels, lines, hook links, you're getting hooks yeah. and stuff soon. We got our own range of uh, in tackle coming in soon, so also from the UK. That's exciting, keep looking at that. Um, what else you've got? All sorts everything of great stuff. Everything you need, basically. Everything you need. Pods, alarms, everything you need for carp fishing. cmfcarp.co.za And then catchmefishing.co.za is everything you need to know for fly, uh, fly, for fishing. fly fishing. Yeah. So whether you carp fishing or fly fishing, you are covered. And then um, 
Yeah, go there and what's the delivery time, eh? Depends on where you stay. Yeah, normally if, if in the, it, we, we send it with a courier, so... So pretty quick. Uh, we, we try to get it out in two days. Okay, so that's quite nice. Uh, the, the quicker we can get it out. Um, the happier you are. The happier I am, the happier you will be. Yeah. So, so <coughs> pretty, you get a pretty quick delivery and then... Um, but yeah. a lot of stores also carry a lot of the products. So, like yeah. uh, Fly, Fly Tang, I know the shop in Pretoria, there's a couple of shops there that stock my products. Yeah. And then we got Trugersdorp, Western stock products. We got, um, and they stock both. They stock the Witchwood, they stock the NGT. So any any of the products that you need, you, if they don't have it, you can ask them, they can get it for you, you can collect it there. Yeah, there you go. So you, you don't need to go only online, so you can go to the shops as well. Yeah, so if, if, if you if you are one of those old school guys that aren't so secure with buying online, you can find the NGT and Witchwood products in the stores, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Okay, so specimen fishing, what do you love about it? Is the fact that you have to put in your homework first or what? Yeah, I think in the day it's it's chase for big fish. Yeah, you, that's it's, specimen it's, carp fishing is when you target actively target a specific fish or just big fish that are over seven kilos. Yeah, you, you generally target bigger fish. You don't want to target the, the small ones because that's pup boy. You, they'll you'll pick them up. Yeah, you, pup boy's numbers. Yeah, the thing is also, but I think the mistake with a lot of people make with specimen is they they chuck their bait in the water and say, okay, now the fish must bite. Yeah. There's a lot of preparation going into it. If you do it right, you, you'll catch a lot of fish. Yeah. I've done a session on the Vol River where we do specimen, where you, in the day you catch fly fishing in night, you set up your carp rods, and from 12 o'clock, every half an hour you get a run. Sure. Where if, if you put the effort in, you're going to catch the fish. But yeah. that's with any sport the same. If you, if you practice, you're going to get the... Yeah. The but, more you work, the luckier you get. Yeah, but also I think people tend to get to water and then chuck their baits in the water any place there is. Look, if, you, if you're a certain spot, you book that spot, you can't do much about it. Yeah, but 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. Yeah, but also I think a lot of people don't look at margins. No, they want they, to cast everybody it as far as they the can side of the every bank. bloody time. So they, they don't look at the margins. Uh, I've caught big fish five meters off the bank. Or even I've caught, I've caught big fish a meter off the bank, depending on how deep the bank is. But yeah. You can literally catch massive, if it can cover the fish's back, the fish can go there. So I've got an eight kilo fish in about 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters of water. Oh, the back is almost out the water. Almost out the water. But, but then they're happy, they're eating. Yeah, they're enjoying it because they know nobody's gonna fish there. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's that's, so, that's pretty cool about margins. Also the thing is, if you get to a venue, a lot of people when they're done fishing for the day, what do they do with their buckets? They dump it in the margin. In the margin. And where do the fish go? They're in like, the margin. Oh, I don't right? get there's caught food yeah. there. Yeah, there's I don't no hooks here. I normally get food fed. Yeah, every day, come four o'clock, everybody's packing up, they're washing their buckets, chuck it in the water. Yeah, if I eat in the middle, I get caught. If I eat right here, I don't get caught. Because so then Hansi takes advantage and of And then Hansi puts the rod right there where right they there. <laughs> Thanks for all the free bait, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the feeding of the fish. Yeah. They create the spot for you. Margins, margins. I would say. It's it's people tend to want to cast quite far. Every I would, time. I would if I if I get to a venue for half an hour before you put any shit in the water, just sit and look at the water. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Watch the water. Let the fish tell you where they are. Take your chair, take a cold thing, make a cup of coffee, and look at the water. Yeah, hundred percent. If if you if you don't have the whole dam for yourself, then basically sit in your spot, see where the fish are turning, look at bubbles. Or look at the open spots and hopefully look for the fish. Yeah, so the thing is, carp give themselves away when they're feeding. They, yeah. they, they make bubbles and you see the bubbles on the surface and all that. So. And that, those bubbles are bubbles that have been built up by the decomposition of debris on the bottom. So yeah, like leaves so they're or... they're sipping in the hojas. Yeah. We're here now. So are we going? Are we here? We're going to go in here now. Okay, go. so we're going to cut that short. That is a little tip top podcast I just want to say thank you for coming on to it hunts yeah, and pleasure. for chatting uh, chatting to us and giving us all of your valuable information so guys make sure to go to cmfcarp.co.za uh, for all your specimen stuff and catchmefishing.co.za for all your fly fishing stuff and 
there are Facebook channels you can follow for Hansi. You can go check those out. He has got a lovely Facebook channel and he posts some fly tying videos now and again. And now and again, there's a tip top video where I've used some of the NGT stuff. You can see that stuff. It's really good quality stuff. Like I've got a, a NGT Fortress X, which is a two man bivy, mm. and I fucking love that thing. So make sure to check out that stuff and it's really great. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you next time on It's Tip Top Podcast and cheers. Thank you.